Hello everyone, in this 13th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity we are going to add in some more UI to give us a bit more dynamic to respawning in our game. Before we get into it remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload, it really helps me out. Now on with the show. So let's deal with some UI elements so as we don't just instantly respawn so it kind of fades out and tells us you know we ran out of time uh, so let's start with the ui text so it's all going to be done inside the canvas so let's go to game object ui let's go to text we'll set this text in the center of the screen so we'll zero out the position so it's dead center um, and i'll put this as you ran out of time just as simple as that and let's have this as size 40 maybe let's have it center and let's change the color to white and let's use the rec tool to adjust the size of our box you ran out of time and let's have it dead center so this should flag up like that on our screen whenever our timer hits zero so in fact i'm going to have that as bold maybe and maybe a little bit bigger there we go. So now let's also deal with a fade screen. So there's two types of fade screens. There's a fading in and there's a fading out. Fading out means you're fading out of the scene to black and fading in means you're fading in from black to the scene. We're going to create the fade out effect in this lesson. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to raw image much in the same way that we did in the last tutorial when we created the completely black screen. And we're going to do the exact same here. So we need to anchor and stretch, set everything to zero, and then set the color as completely black. And we also need to set this alpha as zero. The reason we set the alpha as zero is because we want it to be completely transparent. We need to go from complete transparency to complete translucency to complete opaqueness, if opaqueness is indeed a word. <laughs> anyway, what we need to do now is create another folder, and this will be specifically for animations. So we're going to use an animation to control that fade out. So let's right click, create folder, call it animations if I change my caps lock of course there we go and go into the folder and then make sure we are on that raw image and let's rename it to fade out and let's have the text renamed to in fact we'll have this as time or text and I want that to be on top of the fade out, so round about there. So the order of this canvas does indeed affect how this is displayed. So this will always be on the front and then everything going up will be heading backwards. So what we need to do now is add our animation tab and we need to create a quick animation for fade out. So to do that, if we go down here to our project window, click these little dots here and then go down to add tab and then click on animation and it'll add this tab right here. Now it's very simple to use, at least for simple animations, what we're trying to do here. So don't worry about being too worried about everything going on. So all we need to do is click on create and we will call this um, fade out in the same way that our, fire, our actual asset is called fade out. Now what we need to do is click on the little record button and what this will do is it will start the actual animation recording and we don't have to actually physically do this we can actually set this by determining different things down here. So frame zero is the very first keyframe and a keyframe is dictated by a certain position of the animation and in this case what we need the keyframe to be is the exact starting point of our raw image which is exactly as we have it set up now. So what we need to do to actually put that in there is make a quick change and then revert it. So if we click anywhere in the alpha you'll see these two dots appear here and then set the alpha back to zero. That's now set the very first keyframe so the animation will start exactly as this is set up now. 
let's say we want to fade out over the course of two seconds. We're working in 60 frames a second here, always in 60 frames a second. So what we need to do is put this as one, two, zero, as that is 60 times two, which is two seconds. And after the 120th frame, we want our alpha to be completely black. We want it to look like that. So let's indeed do that. So now we can press the record button once again, and that is our animation. And if we press play, we'll see this loop over and over and over and over now. And obviously we only want this to play just the once. We don't need it to necessarily keep playing. So what we need to do is in the animations folder, click on fade out, and over here, you'll see loop time is ticked. We need to untick loop time. That means it will only play once. Perfect. So now let's combine all of these together to create at least a half decent respawning look for our game. So we can use many different methods of controlling animation here, but honestly, with a fade out, the easiest thing to do is just to turn the object on rather than play around with any animation code. You're also saving maybe a couple of bytes with the code just by turning something on rather than saying play an animation. So let's untick fade out up here. So we turn it off and let's also untick time up text. So now our game looks exactly as it did before. Perfect. So we now need to modify our time script. So let's head to scripts. Let's head into global time. And if you remember what happens here is as soon as it hits zero, it just respawns. So we're going to create a separate coroutine to allow us to control before we actually respawn. So let's add two variables, which is going to be the text we've just created and the fade out. So public game object time up text. And then once again, public game object fade out semicolon. So what we can do here is as soon as we hit zero, we can turn those two game objects on. So time up text dot set active true semicolon. And then it is fade out dot set active true semicolon. Now we don't want this to play here because these won't even appear because in the same frame, it means that we're just going to instantly go to another scene. So we need to get rid of that line of code and place it inside a separate coroutine. Thank you, Avast. Tell me my PC is being slowed. So let's have I enumerator and we'll call this respawning level, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now the first thing we need to do is wait for at least two seconds. And I'm gonna put it as three, just to kind of leave it on screen, you know, to really rub it in that we've ran out of time. So yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, three, semicolon. And after three seconds, what we need to do is use that scene manager line. So scene manager dot load scene one semicolon and save our script. So what we've done effectively here is start up our animations and our text to come on screen to say we've run out of time. And as well here, we have said after three seconds, we are going to reload. Now there is one extra thing that we will do um, before we actually test this out because for the eGlide viewers, you may have noticed that indeed our player can still move around. So the reason that will happen is because we haven't actually turned this player control script off. So what we need to do is we need to reference the player inside our script, obviously the global time script. So heading back into there, let's now set the player as a variable. So public game object player. 
And what that means is that as soon as we hit zero, player dot get component, and in spanky brackets, the name of our actual script that controls our player. So if you cannot remember what it was, you just go to your player and you'll see player controls. So that needs to be typed inside those spiky brackets. Player controls, open close bracket, dot enabled equals false, semicolon, and save. So what that will do is it will turn off the ability to keep moving our player. And obviously everything will function as normal. So let's head back into Unity. Let the script refresh, load up, there we go. And now let's try this whole cycle out. Bashing those blocks, there we go. I think I probably should have reduced the time just a little bit. It's kind of, it's not wasting time as it were. Right, so we should see this start to take effect any second now. So we cannot move our player. Oh, we can move our player. Do you know what I've done? <laughs> yep, that's right. I haven't actually set the variables. Do you know what? For those of you who actually follow me and have followed me for many years, this is one of the silliest things I always do. I need to um, pay more attention, I think. So all I've done there is just set those variables over there. So obviously, because we've added three new variables, Unity doesn't know what those variables are supposed to be. It just doesn't know at all. We're supposed to tell it. So what's essentially happened there is because I have not declared those variables, Unity has got completely confused and it has stopped executing the script as soon as it recognizes a line that it doesn't know what to do. So anyway, while we wait for this now, um, next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we're going to create another way of getting game over. Uh, so we might have like a spiky pole or something. So we should end this any second. There we go. And you've not respawned. I know exactly why you've not respawned. So... <laughs> we didn't start the co-routine. Oh, that's classic, of course. I'm hoping, I'm hoping you guys have already done that. So it's a little test for you there. My my idiocy is a test. It's because we didn't start the co-routine. I implore you to leave a dislike for that one. <laughs> so start co-routine, respawning level, of course bracket, close bracket semicolon and save. So this is third time lucky and I know it's going to work now. So let's press play and I will tell you what we'll do. So I want a, like a spiky kind of pole in the next tutorial. So if we hit the spiky pole, we get game over and we have to respawn. Uh, that's basically where we're going to go from there. Um, should be kind of cool. And we'll see what basically happens. I think we might also add a fade in to our game as well. I think that'd be a really good thing to do. So let's hope that this works. Third time lucky. Third time lucky. And yeah, we ran out of time. And there we go. We've respawned, restarted. Excellent. We got there in the end, guys, didn't we? We got there in the end. So yeah. Next tutorial is going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, guys.